Oh, and the reason for not storing videos from, you know, and really taking local clientele is because of the factor that with holding and being the storage and moving container for said information going and that information being relevant to somebody's trajectory you know as far as livelihood wise could end up posing as a problem or a potential threat or a potential risk so that being said not keeping any video from any incidents local you know well those incident videos from local being in other locations basically prevents a desire for anybody to want to go ahead and try to kidnap or, you know, basically try to extract information while simultaneously going ahead and giving you still a chance of self-preservation regardless because if something ends up happening to you, there being an order to release the footage so that way... There is no alternative story written, you know, for somebody to try to sweep the situation under the rug. Ultimately, it ends up going ahead and saving lives. Think of that. Think of it as a digital shock collar fence. All right. A dragnet that basically extends all around the world. All right. And basically people that go ahead and act in this capacity end up going ahead and being able to assist in divorce proceedings, custody proceedings, you know, uh, internal affairs, investigations, you know, any type of potential oversight, you know, that whatever paperwork, you know, especially when you end up going ahead and getting a sealed zip that ends up going ahead and saying do not extract you know so that way that if that person in any way shape or form ends up potentially ending up with their situation compromised or their freedom compromised because they weren't able to get access to said materials you know because somebody went to go maliciously delete them you know, I'm able to go ahead and say, hey, <coughs> I still have that file. Hold on. And go ahead and send it. I got to tell you, when it comes to the downtime factor or the capability for remote working, there is a lot of room to be able to work remotely, you know, while simultaneously, well, because of being physically impaired, be able to do said job behind, you know, like right from room, pretty much right from wherever that I'm capable of being able to either hold a cell phone or, you know, basically access the internet through a computer. I mean, realistically, it's not complicated. And doing that actually potentially saves lives because there have been plenty of companies. We're talking Fortune 500 companies that there have been circumstances of, you know, hitmen being hired to go ahead and kill the person's, you know, r potential quote unquote rival that, you know, competing for a promotion in their job, you know. Plenty of retaliation from corrupt cops who ultimately end up going ahead and trying to do what they can to dodge from internal, you know, internal affairs. Like, th there's plenty of circumstances that this ends up being very useful and ends up actually being a life or death determination for somebody else, you know? Especially because if you go to torture somebody, 
because you are looking for some specific information. And ultimately, if the specific information isn't anywhere around you, but you have somebody as a third person intermediary that, you know, doing what they could to try to abide, you know, within the legal guide guidelines in order to be able to be like, hey, yeah, I'm holding on to this for you because of the factor that ultimately I understand without that information, it could end up being the driving force to make somebody decide that what you are doing poses so much of a threat to their aspirations and their desires that you have the chance of not leaving the situation with your life intact. You know? And to also know that there's other people that ultimately if something happens to you, you know, there's some footage that would go ahead and dissuade any type of clean sweep under the rug. But ultimately, there's a, a lot of different aspects when it comes to security that somebody could go ahead and work. This right here is basically the way to be capable of doing it without needing to own a firearm, register a firearm, potentially to go ahead and end up in physical altercations everywhere you go because of the factor of, you know, you posing a threat to the general vicinity, you know. Unfortunately, it does end up going ahead and causing people to, ha you know, to start spreading rumors and start wondering how much you make, what you do. How do you got so much time? How are you able to say you got a job? Well, meantime, you're at home, you know? And why is it that you always had that phone in your hand? What could you be doing that's so important? How could this potentially, you know, provide you for a future? You're wasting your life. You're wasting your time. This? Yeah. This is enough to be able to go ahead and actually be able to create a fucking career. While simultaneously, too, knowing that if what ended up being your driving factor to go down this direction was similar to mine, my personal one was numerous circumstances of excessive force that ended up causing me to say, you know what, people just constantly want to swing first and ask questions later. And ironically enough, I'm actually really not bad at fighting, you know, but I also recognize with the amount of damage that my jaw has already taken, that going ahead and being reckless and just, it, it's a decision that's best prolonged as long as possible, you know, risking just straight up getting chin checked. You know, but to also know, too, that the amount of physical damage that my body has endured in the process of this throughout all these years. It's funny how you can go ahead and make your contribution and do so in ways that could potentially not only keep you removed from circumstances that could escalate, you know, and lead to potential excessive force or, you know, uh, intervention that ends up causing somebody to utilize, you know, some form of weaponry, regardless of projectile or, you know, uh, impact. And... You know, still simultaneously know that if ultimately not hearing from somebody for a long time after having information sent to you is never a good sign because that also means that 
potentially things did not go well for them. And at that point, you got to make the unilateral decision of release the video, don't release the video, you know, because potentially releasing the video could end up revealing things that could end up being beneficial to people that ended up being of a detriment to the original the you know the original presenter of said video evidence you know who ultimately usually it's the person presenting the video that's usually the victim of the whether it be abuse or whatever the circumstances as far as the video goes it usually ends up going ahead and tying directly into the person seeking out such services but yeah that's about best explanation i could give <laughs>